What is the most hurtful thing a medical professional has ever said to you? Doctor, glances at my genitals. You have herpes. Me, but I've never had sex. Doctor, oh, stop crying. I diagnose this all the time. It's pretty common. Me, but aren't you going to at least do a test? Doctor, fine, but it's going to hurt and it's going to show herpes. Indeed, it was an allergic reaction to a medication. Me with my pants down, getting checked for a hernia. Doctor, are you able to get an erection? Me, that is an erection. I went to the doctor's office as a child because I was terribly ill and throwing up. The doctor asked if school exams were coming up. I said yes. She simply said hmm, that explains it then. And then she rolled her eyes. Not to me, but to my mom. Doctor said oh, just let him hide in the bathroom. I hid in the bathroom when I got really bad headaches that turned out to be due to a brain tumor. Doc must have assumed I was rubbing one out. Doctor took my height measurement and jots it down before issuing me a very casual. Huh, tall for a woman. I am a bearded man. When I was 16 and dealing with partial deafness, sometimes being a teenage girl is hard, but it's hard to parent them too so there's no need to exaggerate things to make things harder for your parents. Knock it off, there's nothing wrong with you. Two tumors, nine surgeries, and a CSF leak later, yes doctor. There really was something wrong. What's the single most important item in your home that has a value of $1 or less? A brown plastic realistic cockroach nicknamed Freddy. We got it over 20 years ago, I don't remember where or why. Maybe a Halloween party? Anyway. My wife and I have been hiding it for each other ever since. It could take months for Freddy to pop up but he always does. She will find it buried in the sugar pot. I will later find it inside a pair of shoes I rarely wear. It often makes us jump, and give a small fright. I'll hear my wife let a surprised gasp then go, oh Freddy. For me Freddy is a great symbol that our relationship is still solid after all these years, that we still take the time to have fun, to surprise each other. One specific screw, it has emotional significance. During our first official date with my GF, I got a flat tire because of that random screw. I had never changed a tire before in my life and I was afraid I'd make a fool of myself in front of her, but it all worked out well and she was super impressed. Next day, when I took my car to the shop to patch the hole, I asked them to return me the screw just for the happy memory. I have a heart-shaped rock that is about the size of a quarter. My son gave it to me when he was three and told me to keep it forever. I have it in my back pocket daily. What do you think really happens after death? When I was much younger, I had a dream where I died. Not a typical dream, not a romanticized dream. It was a dream where I was an archer in a medieval battle. About five minutes into the battle, chaos was all around me, and I watched an opposing archer aim and loose an arrow straight into my left eye. I remember the sensation of impact, ringing in my ears, and falling to the ground. I remember the warmth of the blood on my face, the feeling of life leaving my body, and the sense of worry evaporating into warmth and peace as the world left behind me. I remember waking up shortly after thinking that the feeling and reality of that experience was so vivid and so detailed that it must have been an experience from a previous incarnation hundreds of years ago. From that moment on, I've never feared the actual process of death. I feel like I've experienced it many times before. When we die, the whole world is seen by us, dies together with us. Your family fights for your belongings. Serious, what is the harshest truth you've ever learned? That even your best friend can turn into a stranger rather fast. Doing your best and giving it your all doesn't always mean things will turn out the way you want. Sometimes things just go bad. Don't fall in love with potential. If somebody doesn't want to be helped you can't help them. This one hurt with a suicidal brother. Life is short. You grow up hearing this over and over again but until you reach a certain age you don't have the perspective to fully grasp this. That one day your parents, grandparents, people who always have been there for you etc. are going to be gone for the rest of your life. What is the most depressing truth that you've had to accept? Not everybody ends up getting the happy ending. That my cancer is incurable and aggressive, and that I'm probably not even going to live to see my kids grow up and start their adult lives. It destroys me. That I'm lonely with no real friends. That a few dozen people can destroy us all because they don't like each other. That I'm not special. That I will never get a chance to have any of my parents' amazing cooking or have another simple conversation with them ever again.
I will probably never own a home or have children even though my childhood was spent being told that these are things all adults achieve. And I make okay money but it's not enough to be middle class these hospital workers. Serious, what regrets do you hear from dying patients? I work in a hospital. Whenever someone is at the end of their life, they always just want to be with their loved ones. Any regrets I've heard is always family related. They wanted more time with the people they love. Most people are at peace with things though. People also tend to wish they took their health seriously. He wished he had been a better father to his daughter. He wished they had reconnected. His dementia prevented him from remembering they had reconnected years before and that she visited often. I wish I could have made him aware that he had accomplished his last wish. But what truly scares you? What human beings are able to do? You never know if the person next to you could snap. Cancer. Watched my dad die a slow painful death from that crap. Scares the absolute hell out of me. Loneliness. Not the I have no partner kind of loneliness, but the kind of loneliness where I'm old and have nobody to talk to, to rely on, to call, to see. No family, no friends, no ancient colleagues, and wondering at which point in my life it all went wrong so much that it lead me to this lonely hell. I'm not mentally prepared to accept my friends and family members dying one day. I just have no idea how I'll continue living with my loved ones who literally raised me especially my mom and dad. The passage of time, every second that goes by won't ever come back and I'm slowly crumbling to dust as approximately half my life has gone and I've become as sympathetic to the dreams I had in the past while I sit waiting to be undone by forces beyond my control. Going through life without living up to my true potential. What is a hard pill to swallow for most people? A lot of people are not fit to be parents. Looking for others to validate your sense of worth will always end in ruin. Sometimes you're the toxic one in the relationship. That life isn't fair. You will face heartbreakingly tragic things that are beyond your control. Some more than others, but everyone has something. Be kind. Sometimes you are the one holding yourself back. That doing your best does not mean you will succeed. That being wrong isn't a bad thing. Apparently the word no is super difficult for a lot of people. What's a normal thing that makes you strangely sad? When an old person is walking around alone. Makes me wonder if they have anybody in their life. The passage of time. A shopping street with a lot of permanently closed stores. Listening to music from a few years ago, it reminds me of the times I was a kid. When a good book series ends. I feel like I'm losing friends. The beauty of nature. The world is so beautiful and we get to spend so little time just enjoying it. Seeing other people my age in relationships. Seeing a lonely and awkward kid in the class. I always think of what they might be in the future being too awkward for people to be friends with and ending up eating alone for the rest of his slash her life. Obese animals. Makes me feel like we're doing something very wrong besides the obvious. People of Reddit who work in a casino. What's some of the saddest moments you witnessed? Former poker dealer at a casino. An older gentleman started to have a heart attack at the table. I called the floor person for assistance with the call button. Paramedics are rushed in etc all within minutes. I'm this instance I am instructed to keep the game rolling by the floor person as he whispered in my ear. Two hands are dealt and played and a player at the table requested the heart attack guy get moved somewhere else as it is disrupting the game. Another player asked to have his chips picked up and call for the open seat because we have a wait list. I was disgusted. There were these two middle-aged Greek or Cypriot ladies who were always on the slot machines. Every day when I started my shift they were they and they were there when I finished 10 hours later. And still they're in the same clothes the next day oftentimes. They were super nice and always polite to the staff. One day they hit the jackpot and win big, I think it was either 15,000 pounds or 45,000 pounds, it was a good few years ago now. Everyone was overjoyed for them, except the managers obviously. Well the managers then gave them free meals at the restaurant and an open bar tab until every single penny of that money was clawed back into the casino. During my 8 hour shift a gentleman won $15,000 on a slot machine. Punched out at end of shift and had the next 2 days off. Returned to work after my weekend to find the man still sitting at the same slot machine. He had been there for 2 plus days losing $15,000. What is the most depressing thing someone told you? I was told my parents died in a car crash via text while in school. It was a long walk home and I'll never forget how empty the house felt. Still to this day gives me a sick feeling in my stomach.
My friend called me last week and immediately I knew something was wrong by the sound of his voice. He was calling to tell me his stepson had committed suicide. It has been an incredibly rough week and it feels awful as I feel nothing I do or say will help him and his wife. Brother, it was good to see you bro. Me, same let do this some more. I found my brother dead from self-inflicted gunshot wound two days later in my backyard. I was bagging groceries in high school. It was Christmas Eve and folks were bustling in and out getting last minute items for their get togethers. I bagged the groceries for this one lady who had just regular food instead of holiday food. I placed her groceries into the cart and followed her to her car. After loading her groceries I told her to have a Merry Christmas. She responded that it was hard to have a Merry Christmas when her husband just died. Like the day before Christmas Eve he died. She broke down crying flooding me with how heartbroken and alone she was. I was 16. I didn't know how to respond. I just sat there and listened as she unloaded. Always thought about her near the holidays and it makes me thankful for my family. What is really frustrating? Washing your face in the sink and the water trickles down your arms towards your elbows and gets your clothes or sleeves wet. Getting comfortable in bed, only to realize you forgot something. All the things you think you must say to that person. After the conversation is over. Adds one of two. My boss. Trying to get a word in when someone won't STF you and let you talk. Please place the item in the bagging area. When your sock slides down your foot while wearing shoes. Asking money back from a friend. Not using turn signals. Someone telling you to do something just as you are about to do it. What's the saddest fact you know? There is a genetic disorder that makes it impossible for some people to sleep. So far only 20 people are known to have it, and none have lived past 30. A guy in my area had just retired on a Friday. The following Wednesday he was out fishing and a thunderstorm came up. He pulled his boat out of the lake and while standing next to his car on the boat ramp lightning took him out. 5 blessed days of retirement. Elephants will mourn other elephants in their group dying and will hold funerals for them and will even recognize the bones of said elephant and cry out in sadness. Penguins sometimes get raped by sea lions. My brother drowned because I pushed him into the pool. When I was 8 years old and my brother was 6, we went to a friend of my mother's house. I ended up befriending the daughter of my mother's friend, we played board games, video games and generally had a great time. My mother then told me we had to go because my brother got sick and threw up on the floor. I was extremely angry with him. So, in order to get back at him I lead him outside while everyone else was getting ready to leave, I then lead him to the pool in their backyard, and pushed him in. I wasn't trying to hurt him, I just wanted to get back at him for spoiling my fun. I thought he would just reach for the edge of the pool and climb out so I just went back inside. A few minutes later I heard screaming. My mother's friend had gotten my brother out of the pool and preformed CPR on him while my mother freaked out. But it was too late, he had drowned. I regret that day ever since then, and probably will for the rest of my life. I wish I wasn't so childish, maybe then my brother would still be alive and my mother wouldn't have PTSD and bipolar disorder, it's all my fault. What's the most effed up thing you did in a sleepover? We had a co-ed church group sleepover at a Vermont farm. I was 13 and recently got a fake testicle, I had my other testicle removed due to an accident, I was getting people to feel my balls and take bets on which one was the real one. I pissed on the air mattress and my friend's mom asked if the raccoon broke in. In Boy Scouts, I was the morning cook, meaning I woke up before anyone else to chop wood, make fire, and get water boiling. I grabbed the hatchet and start splitting a log into little splinters for kindling, it was cold and dewy. The hatchet slipped from my hand mid upward swing and went flying. To the tent circle. It seriously flew 10 to 15 yard and fell straight down low the roof of a tent, where four scouts were sound asleep. 
I'm not sure how long I waited to hear someone start screaming. I probably sat there in terrified anticipation for over a minute. Then I was worried someone might be hurt so I crawled over to the den where the hatchet landed. I super quietly unzipped the flap, and saw it landed in a bag of clothes very close to some kid's head. I snuck in, grabbed the hatchet, left the tent, zipped it back up, and finished breakfast. I heard them at breakfast complaining that the raccoons has ruined their perfectly nice tent by clawing a hole in it. Serious, what secret could ruin your life? A while back, I was cheating on my wife with a co-worker. It went on for months, and I never really cared for the woman I was cheating with. She was super hot, though. After a while my co-worker started getting really crazy and threatening to tell my wife, whom I had a child with and a baby on the way, about everything. Obviously, I kept trying to cut things off because I realized I was making a mistake. She lost it one night and was freaking out and texting me telling me she was going to come to my house, and a drunk driver hit her. She died instantly. No one knows I was having an affair, and my family went to her funeral. One night about a decade ago, when I was 8 years old, I couldn't sleep at night so I was just walking around the house, looking for something to do. It was winter, so there was fire in the fireplace. I started playing with it, throwing stuff into it, watching how it burns. At one point, a big log rolled out of the fireplace. As a kid, I started to panic, I tried to cover it with a blanket, then ran out to the kitchen to get some water. When I came back, the whole living room was on fire, it was a wooden house. I was terrified, ran out of the house. Literally within a minute, it was burning like crazy. My older sister, younger brother, and mom who was pregnant at the time, all blanked instantly. Dad was working a night shift. No one really questioned me. My room had window, and I said I left through it when I saw the fire. The real cause has never been found. My dad was absolutely devastated and a few weeks later shot himself, I found his body. I've been living with my grandparents ever since, no one knows what really happened that night. I spent half of my life with therapists. I hate myself, have a severe depression, attempted a suicide a while ago. Teachers of Reddit, what are you the parent is just as bad as the student's stories. Teaching adjacent. I used to be an educational facilitator at a science center. During the school year I would be the liaison for school trips. During the summer, I would run the summer camps. Parents used to like to plunk their kids in science camp because it is educational. We had a pile of hands on programming. I have to say, it was pretty fun. Fun unless your kid aggressively hates science and you are forcing them to be there. Enter Jason. Jason was a shit on day one. We welcomed them to camp with by making liquid nitrogen ice cream. Jason didn't give a shit. He refused to eat stupid nerd ice cream. Through the day his attitude got worse. He refused to participate. Called the other kids nerds and losers he was an all around pain in the ass. At pickup, I pulled his mother aside and said I don't think Jason really wants to be here. We can arrange for a refund or see if we can transfer him to another program he will find more to his liking. His mother replied it's your job to make him want to be here. Clearly you suck at it. Great. Day 2. Jason shows up with an even bigger chip on his shoulder. The day's activity was engineering. Fort building. Every kid loves a good fort, except Jason. Jason picked up one of the plastic tubes and cracked a kid across the back of the leg with it. As I run over to tend to his victim, Jason cracks me across the side of the head with the tube with all his might, breaking my glasses and giving me a decent bruise across the side of the face. It takes two of us to disarm Jason and separate him from the group. We pull him into the admin office and call his parents to come now. He is no longer welcome. His mother shows up a good three hours later, absolutely livid, not about Jason's behavior. Not in the least, there was no apology or understanding. Instead as we ejected her son from camp, she turned to us and said I hope you all get cancer. What made you ghost a friend? Every conversation was about them and their lives. They rarely asked or were interested in what I had going on. The selfishness was just too much after a while. When I realized a lot of the things that made her laugh were at my expense, she thrived off of humiliating me. When I realized she was maybe my best friend, but I was not hers. In fact, I was only useful to her. I told her not to tell anyone, so she told everyone. Every time when there is a girl involved, this dude turns into the cringiest being there is. Try harding so much to get laid. In a group chat, when two girls were talking about what to wear for their girls' night out, he started bringing up panties, bras and whatnot. I left that group, started a new one with everyone from the old group except him. Too much insult humor, really fucked my esteem. What is your oh shit, I'm an asshole moment. In high school I was walking behind someone in my year I noticed she was walking with a limp so I said hey. Girl's name what the fuck is wrong with your foot? She spun around and said I have cerebral palsy. Still think about it 15 years later. A little late. But when I was in like 4th grade, my dad got remarried, and eventually, my stepmother announced that she was pregnant. I was a little bit upset, since Kidney was still bitter about my parents' divorce, custody battle, etc. And the thought of another sibling from a different mother seemed like salt in the wound for some reason in my mind. 
Sometime later, over dinner, it ended up being announced that she wasn't going to have the kid anymore. When I heard this, I clenched my fist, pumped it in the air, and said yes. My stepmother ran out of the kitchen, followed by my dad. I sat there for a while, eating, and when my dad came back, I asked why my stepmom ran away. He then explained the concept of a miscarriage to me. I still feel awful about it to this day. Edit, she cried in the bathroom. For the rest of the night. Redditors who grew up with strict parents, what was the most absurd rule you had to live by? I once got grounded because I did the dishes without having to be reminded. My mom said that I was trying to manipulate her and that I must have only done it because I was trying to get something out of her. In reality, all I really wanted out of her was to stop yelling at me about how I never do the dishes without having to be reminded. I was not allowed to use the money cheat on Sims growing up because that's not how the real world works. I used the cheat once and couldn't explain where all the money I had came from so I was grounded and had Sims taken away. Nobody in my house was allowed to get the mail except my dad, doesn't matter what time he got home, leave the mail in the mailbox. He would also personally open all the mail no matter the recipient, he would always know if anyone touched it. After I turned 9 years old I wasn't allowed to watch cartoons anymore, I hated my dad for it. I wasn't allowed to leave my room, I could go to the bathroom or kitchen but I better have a reason to be there. What's your dodge to bullet story? Me and my girlfriend at the time were traveling from New Zealand to my family back home in Sweden. We both decided to spend a bit more money to fly back to NZ through Paris instead of Amsterdam. Just because we wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. It cost us maybe an extra 50 and we got to see it on the landing and then take off. But never actually set foot in Paris proper because we were poor students. When we landed in Auckland, New Zealand, we turn on our phones and notice that we have about 50 missed calls from our travel agent. Which was odd. When we call her, she sounds super relieved and out of breath. She tells us the flight she originally suggested to us. The one from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was shot down over Ukraine. My brain couldn't process that information at the time. But once I woke up the next day it hit me like a ton of bricks. 50 made the difference between seeing the big steel thingy that has so many photos of it and brings sent to Sweden in body bags piece by piece. Sometimes the absurdity of my existence comes over me. And this story always gives me goosebumps. Serious, what's the most creepy memory you have from when you were a kid? I remember when I was about 12 onward I'd randomly wake up in the middle of the night to my abusive mother standing in the doorway she had this look she would give when she was particularly messed up between the alcohol and opioids and sleeping pills she'd mix it was absolutely satanic on multiple occasions i would wake up to her just staring at me but way longer than just to check on me she would just stand there for what seemed like forever and if i even slightly moved she'd scream at me for being awake and punish me one day my dad called me out to the living room and my mother is there looking pretty concerned telling him he was taking things too far. He tells me your mom says you've been laying in bed crying at night because you're afraid someone's going to come in your room and kill you? What's that about? I was totally confused and just blew it off as one of my mom's drunk slash hide delusions and told him I absolutely didn't. It wasn't until I was an adult that I realized that whenever my mother said something about someone else, she was projecting. Like she told me for years that she suspected that my dad was cheating on her. She was actually cheating on him. Bitch was probably getting fucked up out of her mind and thinking about killing me in my own bed. No. We don't talk anymore and I've informed her I will use whatever force necessary to remove her from my property if she ever gets it in her head to show up. I used to swim in the river in our town with my father. Everyone was doing it back then. I was about 7 years. Oh. And we went to our swimming tour. When we got out I touched something creepy with my foot and asked my dad to check. He pulled out a dead bloated guy. I had nightmares for years, eyes. I think my mom is in love with me. She's acted strange my whole life. I'm 26 male, I'm shaking while typing this. It's just so frustrating and disgusting. Growing up, me and my mom were close. We did everything together and I told her everything. Then I got to the end of my middle school year she started getting weird, she'd constantly ask if I was talking to girls, which is normal in itself I guess but the time she saw me getting off the bus with a girl at the time she flipped, she even hit me, said that's how you get girls pregnant and grounded me, she'd also say stuff like how I was a better man and how she will always be the first woman in my life. When I got to high school and got my first girlfriend I asked her if I could go over, she said hum. You barely let me see you with your pants off anymore and yet she gets to see all your bits. Needless to say that was weird, and I wasn't even planning to make love with her that day, 
She basically said I needed her permission to lose my virginity, I did in secret and when I finally admitted it after some pressure she literally cried and screamed at me. The rest of my high school career was filled with these awkward moments with my mom. Fast forward to now I have a fiancé, who I'm very serious about. At this point my mother has also found a boyfriend and I thought that would put an end to her weird behavior but it didn't. My mom hates my fiancé, says she's a whore, not good enough, wears too much makeup, eats weird food. Over text she's even said she hopes I'll always choose mommy. We announced her pregnancy at a family event, and everyone was excited except for my mother, who later sent entire paragraphs about my fiancé and our baby. My fiancé read them and she's been crying and begging to go no contact, and I'm seriously considering it. My mom sent a text saying no one will ever love you as much as I have. You are technically mine Ethan. WTF. I think my mom is in love with me. She's acted strange my whole life. I'm 26 male. I'm shaking while typing this. It's just so frustrating and disgusting. Growing up, me and my mom were close. We did everything together and I told her everything. Then I got to the end of my middle school year she started getting weird. She'd constantly ask if I was talking to girls, which is normal in itself I guess but the time she saw me getting off the bus with a girl at the time she flipped, she even hit me, said that's how you get girls pregnant and grounded me, she'd also say stuff like how I was a better man and how she will always be the first woman in my life. When I got to high school and got my first girlfriend I asked her if I could go over, she said hum, you barely let me see you with your pants off anymore and yet she gets to see all your bits. Needless to say that was weird and I wasn't even planning to make love with her that day, she basically said I needed her permission to lose my virginity, I did in secret and when I finally admitted it after some pressure she literally cried and screamed at me, the rest of my high school career was filled with these awkward moments with my mom, fast forward to now I have a fiancé, who I'm very serious about, at this point my mother has also found a boyfriend and I thought that would put an end to her weird behavior but it didn't, my mom hates my fiancé, says she's a whore, not good enough, wears too much makeup, eats weird food. Over text she's even said she hopes I'll always choose mommy. We announced her pregnancy at a family event, and everyone was excited except for my mother, who later sent entire paragraphs about my fiancé and our baby. My fiancé read them and she's been crying and begging to go no contact, and I'm seriously considering it. My mom sent a text saying no one will ever love you as much as I have. You are technically mine Ethan. WTF Uber drivers, what's the deepest secrets you've overheard in your car? Former Uber driver here, picked a girl up a sweet girl from a bar on a Wednesday night, absolutely hammered, about 10 p.m. She got into my car, apologized for being so drunk and politely asked if we could just drive around a little while, with the windows down. I was prepping for a cleaning fee, trying to drive and pull a vomit bag out of the glove box, but no, she just did that airplane thing with one hand out the back seat window. She asked me if I had ever thought about dying, to which I replied, yeah, I guess so. That's when she told me that she had cancer. It was in her brain and it was too far gone to consider chemo. I remember my heart just pounding. She told me she was dying and she was going to be okay. Tonight she was celebrating with her work friends who threw her a going away party. She told them she was taking a position abroad. I just didn't tell them that abroad was heaven. Jesus. Effing. Christ. I turned off my app and cried my ass all the way home. I think my mom is in love with me. She's acted strange my whole life. I'm 26 male, I'm shaking while typing this, it's just so frustrating and disgusting, growing up, me and my mom were close, we did everything together and I told her everything, then I got to the end of my middle school year she started getting weird, she'd constantly ask if I was talking to girls, which is normal in itself I guess but the time she saw me getting off the bus with a girl at the time she flipped, she even hit me, said that's how you get girls pregnant and grounded me, She'd also say stuff like how I was a better man and how she will always be the first woman in my life. When I got to high school and got my first girlfriend I asked her if I could go over, she said hum, you barely let me see you with your pants off anymore and yet she gets to see all your bits. Needless to say that was weird, and I wasn't even planning to make love with her that day, she basically said I needed her permission to lose my virginity, I did in secret and when I finally admitted it after some pressure she literally cried and screamed at me. The rest of my high school career was filled with these awkward moments with my mom. Fast forward to now I have a fiancé, who I'm very serious about. At this point my mother has also found a boyfriend and I thought that would put an end to her weird behavior but it didn't. My mom hates my fiancé, says she's a whore, not good enough, wears too much makeup, eats weird food. Over text she's even said she hopes I'll always choose mommy. 
we announced her pregnancy at a family event, and everyone was excited except for my mother, who later sent entire paragraphs about my fiancé and our baby, my fiancé read them and she's been crying and begging to go no contact, and I'm seriously considering it, my mom sent a text saying no one will ever love you as much as I have, you are technically mine Ethan. WTF. What mind-blowing, but simple, facts would satisfy a four-year-old daughter's daily request for one fact before bedtime. Most elephants weigh less than a blue whale's tongue. Pineapples used to be so expensive that people would rent them as a centerpiece for their party. Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. A single strand of spaghetti is a spaghetto. At birth, a baby panda is smaller than a mouse. Violin bows are usually made from horse hair. The color red doesn't make bulls angry, they are colorblind. Herring fish communicate with flatulence. If you heat up a magnet, it loses its magnetism. It snows metal on planet Venus. Garlic attracts leeches. In 1992, a shipping crate full of 28,000 rubber ducks fell off a ship. They kept washing up for years. Bees tell their friends about good nearby flowers by dancing. Kangaroos can't walk backwards. In Switzerland, it's illegal to own just one guinea pig, if you have any, you have to have at least two. They get lonely. Steve Irwin has you pinned down in a headlock. What cool facts does he tell the audience about you and your habitat? This little bugger simulates reproduction up to five times a day, almost exclusively without a mate. Then I imagine he would shove a Dorito in my mouth, and chuck me back into my bedroom. Well be very careful mates, we have to show dominance. If we show any affection towards this creature he'll get attached to us and never leave us alone. Truly one of the most terrifying beasts in North America. This little fella looks upset but he actually craves physical contact. Crikey, this Lurangai is quite the sneaky little one. This popular type of animal can hide in a dark room all day and never even see the sunshine. She will do as much as she can to avoid others of her kind. Crikey, this animal lives in a dilapidated bachelor pad and is capable of eating his wet and putting over the weekend. What's something you can say at both the dinner table and in bed? Alexa set a timer for two minutes. Oh shit. I almost choked. My ass will be sorry tomorrow. I only like breasts. You got some on your chin. I feel stuffed. That really filled me up. I don't think I can fit any more in. I want more. Go get it in the back. Ask grandma for some more. It's raw. It's a little dry. I'm finished. What small gestures impact your life the most? When someone remembers little details about me. When strangers are kind to me for no reason it gives me hope for humanity. Friends who honestly recognize your hard work achievements. Hearing from others that positive things have been said about me when I wasn't around. Makes me feel like they're really genuine. Letting in cars in traffic and getting a wave of acknowledgement and thanks. Making eye contact with someone and realizing you both have the same reaction to whatever the hell is happening in front of you. When someone smiles at you when you walk by them on the street. Besides eating cereal with water what is the most outrageous eating sin you have ever witnessed? My sister used to put ketchup on strawberries. A watermelon and ketchup sandwich. I call it a sandwich because it makes me sad. A former friend of mine once poured a can of Coors Light into a bowl of Cheerios. He called it Beerios. Saw a dude eat spaghetti and milk one time. One very dark time. One time, a long time ago, I ate Lucky Charms with Guinness as a St. Patrick's Day bastardization. I would not recommend. Kid I used to know in school used to rip open his milk carton, and dip his burrito into the chocolate milk. Sometimes he'd even go so far as to rip open the burrito and pour his milk onto the beef and eggs too. I'm quoting him here, creamify the meat. I don't know man, but the word creamify is just, oof. Fried eggs with chocolate melted on the oak. Dude in my dining hall had a plate of sunny side up eggs. Scooped under an egg with his fork brought it up to his mouth and only touched his lips to the yolk. Proceeded to suck all the yolk, and then slurped the rest of the egg in. It was like a car crash, I couldn't look away but I was horrified. My mom puts peanut butter on cold pizza. It is the closest flavor to vomit that is not vomit. What's an incredibly American thing Americans don't realize is American. Free refills at restaurants. Ranch. Prescription drug commercials. Thanking military people for their service. Absurdly protracted election cycles. Election campaigns in the U.S. appear to take a full year, when they typically just last a month or two in most of the countries I've visited. 
handing your credit card to a stranger, having them walk away, swipe it, then bring it back to like they didn't just put a down payment on a new house with it. American here. When I studied abroad, I was smiling and friendly to strangers. In London they looked like I wanted to steal something from them. drive through ATMs and everything else. I didn't learn we had drive through liquor stores until later in my life. The cult of high school slash college sports. What was the most gruesome celebrity death? It's gotta be Vic Morrow on the Twilight Zone movie, right? Adult and two kids getting shredded by a crashing helicopter? Actor John Eric Hexum decided he was going to screw with a prop gun on the set of a TV show he was working on. He didn't think blanks were dangerous so he put it to his head and pulled the trigger. The trauma ended up killing him two days later. I can't imagine the impression that left on his co-stars who saw him do it. Perhaps not as well known, but singer Charmaine Maxwell, Maxie, from the R&B group Brownstone was drinking wine in her apartment when she suddenly fell and landed on her glass which cut her throat causing severe bleeding and she died from blood loss in hospital shortly afterwards. Cliff Burton from Metallica, falling out of his bus window while sleeping and getting crushed by said bus. Pretty horrible way to go. On September 14, 1927, dancer Isadora Duncan was strangled in Nice, France. When the long silk scarf she is wearing around her neck got tangled in the rear hubcaps of her open sports car. Owen Hart. Professional wrestler with WWF slash WWE. A stunt where he came from the upper level of the stadium on a zipline type setup. Harness broke and he fell to his death in front of a very packed Kemper Arena, Kentucky 1999. What's not cool anymore when you turn 30? Sleep deprivation. Yep. I loved pulling all-nighters as a teen and young adult. Now they just give me migraines and make the entire subsequent day hell. Bragging about your high school accomplishments. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains. Hangovers. Hangover when you're 20, I'll be fine, just give me some coffee and sandwich and I'm good as new. Hangover when you're 30, for fuck's sake now my day is ruined. Sleeping 8 to a hotel room to save money. Trying to keep up with modern slang words. How do you do, fellow kids? Trying to act cool. Spending all your money at the bar on payday. Telling people with full-time jobs and bills that their hobbies are childish. Acting stupid and doing dumb shit. Your risk of getting hurt increases. Thinking things aren't cool anymore because you turn 30. What is the most ridiculous thing you've ever had to deal with at work? A coworker screaming at me for leaving food to rot in the shared fridge. It was my first day there and I hadn't even unpacked my belongings yet. I work at a library. The amount of people who don't bring their library card with them and then refuse to give me ID so I can look up their account is baffling. I'm just trying to prove they are who they say they are. Also a mentally ill lady once told me that Osama bin Laden wanted to steal shoes from the artist formerly known as Prince. I had someone throw a drink at me through the drive through window, which is an unwise thing to do to someone standing in front of a shelf of other drinks waiting for the customers behind you. Close second. We had a guy that robbed our gas station for like a month with a finger gun before he finally got caught. Everyone knew it was a finger gun, but you have to comply when someone robs the store so. A co-worker routinely didn't flush after doing a number two in the employee men's room. He just left it there in the toilet for all to see. The guy thought it was hilarious, especially when other employees would call him out on it. A co-worker attempted to prove that you couldn't actually hurt yourself slipping on a banana peel by stepping on one after which he slipped and hurt himself. I refused to write it up as an incident. It was too stupid. What kind of person would you never be friends with? People who are overly rude and constantly laugh it off and call themselves assholes as if it is an uncontrollable character trait. People who can never admit they're wrong about anything. No matter how blatantly wrong. People that distort what you said. People who bitch and moan about everyone in their life. The kind that talks behind your back. I'm a woman. Had a classmate strike a conversation with me for the first time. Two minutes and said she doesn't have female friends because all women are bitches. Why are you talking to me then? What do you think you are? One-uppers. A better way to say this is bet it's. Been everywhere, done everything, twice. Did you notice how I one up your post? Anyone who shows bigotry to people based on their nationality, and French people. What things are frowned upon for no obvious reason? Spending time by yourself that is intentionally non-productive. Getting the cheapest bottle of wine on the menu. Going out alone. Anywhere. Park, cinema, restaurants, concerts. All my friends and relatives think I'm weird, but I just want to have some good time with nobody I know around. 
Certain jobs. If you tell someone you've been a janitor for six years there's a good chance their response will be a frown. Calling out sick when you're actually sick, especially when it's more than one day. Confidently being quiet slash silent. Getting help for anything. Not having an opinion on a subject. Going to a movie by yourself. You literally sit there quietly watching a screen for hours. I usually catch them by myself, but people act like I'm disposing of a body when I do that. Women have read it. What's the worst red flag that a guy could have? A man once told me I don't usually like women, but I can tolerate you. To clarify, he wasn't gay, he didn't get on well with women, he said I wasn't the same as most of the women he had met in my company could be tolerated. I was at a pub once next to a canal. I had to go home so I said my goodbyes to the guy I had been talked to and he said, do you want to go for a walk along the canal? I said, no I need to get home I have work tomorrow and I live in the other direction. He got angry and said why not? I'm not going to attack you. When he says I never apologize for anything thinking it sounds cool. But really it's, yikes. The ones that rage too much when playing video games, I'm not talking about turning the device off or yelling out a simple fuck. I'm talking about punching and breaking things, if I meet someone like that I'm running home ASAP. A few weeks before my 20th birthday, a dude told me I could pass for 15, or possibly 14, and then said, I don't mind that. Nope. Absolutely not. No. I wasn't interested in him before and I definitely wasn't after that. What's a weird thing you think only you do? Use my turn signal to change lanes on the highway. I have to let my wife go up the stairs first when it's bedtime because she has an irrational fear of being shot through the letterbox. When I need to make a decision I consult an imaginary person in my head who is a combination of everyone I know and they give me advice that I'm really giving myself. Ah yes, the counsel. I do the same but with like, two or three people representing parts of my personality. There's not always a consensus and we end up arguing for hours. I used to think that I was the only person who stood like a flamingo but Reddit showed me there is a whole subspecies of us. When I mow the yard I pretend I'm on ESPN and two sports announcers in my head are commenting on how excellent I took the turn, and the precision movements of my mowing. When I go get the mail if I hear a car coming I run in the house real quick so they don't see me and then look through the blinds like I got away with something. I try and make sense of license plate letters like acronyms. Whenever I see a pigeon, I always say ah bonjour monsieur pigeon. Absolutely no idea why I do this, particularly as I have zero connections to France. What type of people are you scared of? The drunk guys at bars that always have, that, stare. The dangerously stupid. Fucking up and hurting others but come out unharmed to sheer luck. People with a short temper. People who refuse to take responsibility for their mistakes. The loud and uninformed. People who get mad at fast food cashiers. It's just so uncomfortable to be around them when they're attacking someone over a simple mistake or inconvenience. Those people who drive like maniacs on the highway. Liars. If you unknowingly put trust in one. They can and will manipulate your perception of reality to the point that you don't trust your own mind anymore. People who are unwilling to accept the limits of their knowledge. What's a job that's romanticized but in reality sucks? Veterinary medicine. Fantasy, I get to work with puppies and kittens. Reality, a three-month-old kitten died in my care. I've seen so much gore and blood and neglect. I've sent animals home with invasive cancers because family can't afford treatment. I've been the only comfort shelter animals knew before they left this world. It is a specific and exhausting kind of pain and it isn't really talked about enough. People who say they couldn't do it because of the euthanasia have no idea. I strongly suspect being a spy doesn't involve half as many high-tech gadgets and spontaneous sexual intercourse as I've been lead to believe. One former member of the CIA said the most unbelievable thing about James Bond was that he never had to file an expense report. Architect. You think you'll be designing big fancy iconic buildings. Warehouses, Walmarts, strip malls, and shitbox apartments all need architects and that's probably what you'll end up doing. Apparently lifeguard, because nobody can find them anymore. Computer game development, especially testing. That is the ass end of an industry that is mostly ass. Everyone used to think it was awesome that I worked in live sports TV. 70% of the people I worked with were miserable pricks with overinflated egos, and then there were the athletes. Americans of Reddit, what's something anyone visiting the US for the first time absolutely must know about or be aware of? Taxes added to the shelf prices at the checkout. 1. Come to America just before Thanksgiving. 2. 
Casually mention to American acquaintance that you're alone on Thanksgiving. 3. Accept immediate invite to whatever Thanksgiving gathering is being held. Everyone has their own quirky Thanksgiving traditions and we love sharing them. You can't drive across the country in 12 hours. You can drive 8 hours east to west and still be in Texas. Drinks come with ice by default. I think it's really funny that the Californian DMV official driver's manual says, do not make eye contact with another driver, this will make them more angry. Go to national parks. Just please don't interact with the wildlife. Many of them can and will injure or kill you. Even if they're cute or not very large. It's big. Don't think you can rent a car and just drive coast to coast in an afternoon. The CD is not free, never accept something from someone on a street. If the price says for example $5, you need to be aware that is $5 plus taxes. What is a useless skill that you have? I can always find the most in the way place near anyone who is busy. Competitive Minesweeper. Was 15th in the world at one point. I can send and receive Morse code at 65 plus words per minute. Completely pointless skill. I've worked in a deli most of my life. I can weigh things in grams early accurately with just my hands. Some customers get pretty kind blown. I can play a blade of grass. I can smell ants. Apparently it's like a genetic thing. They kind of smell like an earthy sulfur. They smell awful. I hate them. I can pronounce the Welsh town of Lanfair Pwgwinjil Gozer H. Wundrabwul and Azilia Gagaga coherently and without hesitation. I'm extraordinarily good at towel whipping. Made someone bleed once. I can put on an undershirt backwards almost 100% of the time on the first try without wanting to. I'm good at learning a little about a lot of things. My knowledge is a vast ocean, but it's very shallow. What is normal now but wasn't normal 50 years ago, 1972? Asking where are you? When someone answers their phone. Car seats for children. And most of the time we sat in the back seat with no seat belts available. Watching an entire TV series at a time that's convenient for you. VCRs weren't even a thing 50 years ago, so if your favorite show was on Wednesday at 8 p.m., you were either at home to watch it or you missed out on it forever. Wearing seat belts. There were no sensor seat belt were just shoved out of the way. Carding for cigarettes. Machines were everywhere for anyone to use. Paying for everything using a plastic card or a phone. Trying to find jobs for disabled adults, instead of locking them away in institutions. Watching movies at home. And video games. A line of cars picking up kids at school. In the 70s you walked, rode your bike, or rode the bus, even the grade school kids. What do you desperately want right now? To have a good mindset again, I've been feeling off lately. To retire. A better job. To stop overthinking. Unlimited cosmic power, but I'd settle for a good night of sleep. For my wife to stop wallowing in the toxic mire that is Facebook. I can see what it's doing to her but she won't give it up. For my back pain to end. True love, affection and affirmation. Or whatever the hell my username says. Financial security, it's absolutely debilitating to worry about paying for existing. To own a house. To be normal, I have a brain injury and it is incredibly frustrating to not be able to function normally. For my wife to be cured of her autoimmune disease. To know what it's like to not worry about money. My daughter back. She took her own life last year at age 34. To dance with somebody. To feel the heat with somebody. I don't know, for me personally I want to dance with somebody who loves me. What are some of the first signs a movie is going to suck? It has forced jokes. Excessive use of nostalgia to keep the viewer engaged. Like the last Jurassic World. When the three trailers they release before the movie comes out pretty much show most of slash the best of the action. The movie trailer gives away the entire plot including the only comedy moment. The backstory is introduced through an unrealistic and forced conversation where people who have known each other for years list facts about each other. When the most flattering review they can find to run in the marketing is like, this is definitely a movie, bobsmoviereviews.net. Starring Jared Leto. It's a Netflix movie with big name actors. They spend 95% of their budget on getting somebody like The Rock for it and 1% writing the script. When it includes the word emoji in the title. If the commercials have the cast talking to the audience about the movie, instead of showing clips of the actual movie. Teachers of Reddit, what's the weirdest thing a student answer to tell me a fun fact about yourself? 
A guy in my class introduced himself by telling us how he decided he wanted to study philosophy because one day he was really high peeing in the street and he saw a couple of people working and he wondered what they were doing. So he realized his passion was wondering. He dropped out like two months later. We did one of those two truths one lie bets. Girl stands up and says, I've never been out of the country. I'm at win. I love playing sports. I knew this girl beforehand and knew she didn't have a twin, so picked that one. Nope. She had a conjoined twin that died in utero and had to be surgically removed and she's now missing the last vertebrae on her spine. Showed us the scar and everything. Apparently the lie was the first one as she'd been to Mexico. A student once told my wife that her daddy had a special device that he had to blow into to start his truck. My dad clogged the toilet this morning and that's why I'm feeling frustrated minus five year old child. I will say the question was how are you doing this morning? But I could barely keep from laughing out loud. What is the most shocking thing you have ever seen in your life? I did a temporary job after being laid off from my usual work. An old guy was operating a machine and it had a jam inside it, he pressed the emergency shut off and opened the safety gate, as he cleared the blockage the two huge presses crushed his ribs trapping him. I ran across and managed to pry one out of the way to release him. Called the supervisor to get an ambulance and this asshole didn't want to call one because they'd get in trouble with the owner. Because in the UK if an ambulance is called for a workplace injury then it has to be reported to the health and safety executive, OSHA, for you American folk. I ran to my car and called the ambulance myself, turned out the old guy had four broken ribs and one of them was a flail, where the rib is broken off and moving around the rib cage. Got a call the next day from the employment agency, saying that the company didn't want me back. I said that's great because I have no intention of going back to a company who were prepared to let someone die rather than call an ambulance. What is normal at 3 p.m., but terrifying at 3 a.m.? A phone call from parents slash relatives etc. Sound of an ice cream van, I must now buy an ice cream van to drive around at 3 a.m. Children playing outside. Especially flying a kite. Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing the bell. A kid's toy going off in a random room. My kids used to have a book that, when opened, played nursery rhymes. It turns out that when the battery is running low the book does two things. One, it plays the tune even while closed. Two, it plays the tune really slow and in a lower pitch. You can see where this is going right? Middle of the night me and my husband are woken by twinkle twinkle little star being croaked at us from under our toddler's bed. A child laughing. There's nothing more precious than a child's laughter, unless it's three in the morning and you don't have kids. The sound of a branch breaking when you're outside. What is the most shocking thing you have ever seen in your life? Me and my grandpa was making cookies when he looked out the window and saw some kids outside and told me, Hey, how about we give those kids some treats, yeah? I agreed and walked outside, he gave me the tray of cookies and said wait here, I'll be right back. I gave the kids cookies as my grandpa went back in. 30 minutes later I head back in to find him lying on the floor. Turns out he had a heart attack but didn't seem to yell out for me, I miss him so much. My best girlfriend, coming back from a night out at a club, there were two cars, five of us in each. She was in the first car when the driver of the truck coming in the other direction veered off the lane, smashing into the first car. I saw her decapitated be the windscreen. The others in that car were broken boned and smashed but I ran up to the car and my friend without her head has haunted me for over 50 years. The Blood A married couple hosted a dinner party for a group of friends and professional acquaintances. During the course of the evening, the couple got into an intense argument in front of everyone. Everyone was appalled when the husband slapped his wife so hard she was knocked to the floor. Some of us present had to pull him off her because his rage was out of control, and, as far as anyone could discern, over nothing of consequence. Redditors, where does cheating in a relationship start for you? If you would be unwilling to tell your partner about an interaction, then it's probably time to start thinking about what you're doing. Lies. It always starts with lies. Be it texts or snaps, if one of us have to lie or hide, it's wrong and should not happen. If you wouldn't want your partner to know, it's cheating. I wouldn't flirt with someone else in front of my partner, so I don't flirt with people when he's not around either. It depends on what each couple would consider to be off limits. A good guide is if you're doing something you would hide from your partner or wouldn't do it if they were in the room with you, 
then that's cheating. It can range from having sex with someone else, to simply flirting. The sneaking around. The second you start plotting to do something behind my back, you're violating the trust of the relationship. First tier would be texting another dude in a non-platonic way. Second tier would be actually hanging out with this person behind my back and lying about where you were. Third tier is any kind of non-platonic physical contact, holding hands to fucking it's all the same to me. If there's a gray area, it's cheating. If you know they will be upset, it's cheating. If you have to hide it slash lie slash emit details, it's cheating. Dear security guards of Reddit, what was the most effed up thing you've ever saw on your shift? I've worked security for the past 30 years from working on the doors for clubs to hotel security, but nothing quite stuck with me like this did. It was my second security job, I was working at a big hotel in London, I had the graveyard shift so it was usually super calm, most shifts I was paid to watch movies and scroll through my phone. This one night however was very different, about an hour into my shift I got a call from reception to say there was an extremely distressed man telling them he was about to be killed and a gang was after him. He spoke very limited English so reception was struggling to fully understand the issue. I checked the cameras and could see the man reaching over the desk trying to grab for the phone so I rushed down from my office. When I got down I took the man into a side room and tried to get him to explain the situation. He begged me to call the police saying a gang had been following him and they were going to chop him into pieces and kill him. He was extremely scared. I left him in the room and phoned the police. They arrived and talked to the man, and supposedly sorted out the issue. They checked him into a room at the hotel and said they would be back in the morning to interview and discover what has happened. I took the man up to his room and left him there. The man stayed in his room all night and no one bothered him. It was about 30 minutes before my shift finished so I thought I would go knock on his room to make sure he was okay before I left. I got to his room and knocked on his door. No answer, I knocked again hard and shouted security, no answer, I was worried for his safety so unlocked the door and shouted in, still no answer, I entered the room, it was completely empty, then suddenly I get a call from reception, the girl was crying her eyes out, shouting for me to get down immediately. I ran down the stairs as quick as I could, when I got to the bottom I could see the man stood in the middle of the hotel lobby carrying a fire extinguisher covered in blood, he was also covered in blood but looked to have no injuries. There was a trail of blood splats leading from him to the first lift. I immediately radioed into the police as an emergency. I kept my distance but shouted at the man to explain what had happened. He told me they had come for him and he had to defend himself. The police soon arrived. As soon as they did the man surrendered himself and he was handcuffed and put into a police van. It was now safe for me to cross over the lobby so I went and had a look inside the lift. Inside were two men. Their faces so damaged they barely looked human. The lift was covered in blood, as if it had been painted red. It was an awful sight. He had hit them so hard with the extinguisher he had caved their faces in. The worst part, the two men had nothing to do with any gangs. They were regulars at the hotel, who Al got to know quite well. They both had kids and families. They were staying over this night to visit a famous art gallery. I never found out what happened to the man who killed them. What would be the scariest message humanity could receive from outer space? Stop transmitting, they will hear you. Just a distress signal on permanent repeat. Then another one a few years later, then another one, then another ten, then thousands, then they all just stop. We are sorry, we weren't able to stop them. Just a countdown timer with no other context. You are the last, be better than us. Children laughing, but it's definitely 100% absolutely guaranteed to be coming from near the center of the galaxy. Never camp alone with a camera. I'm, 22F, an avid nature photographer. I regularly go on hikes into the deep middle of woods and forests to catch the rarest beauties of nature. Anyway, I head out to this location I've been meaning to go to for a while. Some of my photography friends have been before and got stunning photos of deer, badgers and various rare birds. I drove as far as I could before the woods started, parked my car up in a lay-by, grabbed my tent, camera and supplies and head into the forest. It was quite misty but the forecast said it would clear up overnight. I found a badger den after about 30 minutes of walking into the forest, so decided this would be the perfect spot to set up my camera to hopefully catch some badgers on film overnight. I pitched my tent just far enough away not to disturb or scare the badgers and went over to set up my camera, I had it facing so it would catch lots of the entrances in the same shot, plugged it into the power pack, and left it running, I had a motion sensor so if it was to catch movement overnight it would begin filming. Everything seemed fine, I was in the middle of the woods, away from any paths, so it was very unlikely anyone would disturb me in the night. The next morning I woke up and could see fresh trails around the den, so I knew I would have caught some badgers on camera, I was so excited. I tried to check the footage on my camera straight away but both it, and the power pack, had died, and unusually the power pack was no longer plugged into my camera. Weird. I was sure I had plugged it in. 
I just hoped it had enough battery to catch the badgers on film, I'd have been gutted if I'd missed them, nervous I'd messed up. I decided to head back to my car to charge up my camera and have a look at the pictures. I packed up everything and walked back to the car, it took about half an hour for my camera to charge up and turn back on, it turns on and I go to my camera roll, the first video was of the badger den, but I couldn't see anything there, there must have been some movement to trigger the camera to begin recording but I couldn't see anything within the shot, it was recorded at 2.30 am, after about 20 seconds of nothing the recording stops. I flick to the next recording, and it's a photo of my tent, I flick to the next and it's a photo of me alone asleep, inside my tent. This was followed by about 40 more photos of me sleeping in my tent. The final photo, taken at 5.30 a.m., about half an hour before I woke up, was a picture of my car. I could feel the fear rush over me. My hair stood up on the back of my neck. I began driving and I drove as fast as I could. There was no signal and no one was else around for miles I managed to get home safely. I still don't know who took the photos, or why they were taken. I've not been camping since. People that have gone to jail slash prison or worked there, what are your most interesting, funny, scary or gross stories? I was a college instructor teaching in state prisons for several years. At first, I was a bit anxious about being in that environment. After all, I was in a room with about two dozen convicted murderers, rapists, child molesters, and drug dealers. It wasn't exactly a welcoming place. But, after about a month, I realized that I had nothing to worry about. I was surprised to find that these guys were willing to put themselves in harm's way to protect the teachers. I had just started my lecture one day when a lockdown was called. Our room was locked, from the outside, and we could not move until it was over. We heard, coming from upstairs, what sounded like a riot breaking out. Teach, get in the corner, one of my guys said, practically pulling me off my feet and pushing me into the corner furthest from the classroom door. The guys then proceeded without saying a word to each other, to pile all of the classroom desks in front of the door and stand between me and said desks. They were creating a barrier to keep me safe. It turns out that the riot we heard was not as big as we feared, so the lockdown only lasted about an hour. Afterward, once we got the okay and the room was put back in order, I asked the guys why they did what they did. Some motherfucker hurts you, one of the guys said, all the teachers will leave. We don't want to lose our education because some assholes can't control themselves. I am responsible for the deaths of several people. Around four years ago, I was a vendor on the darknet. It was a relatively short-lived thing. I was just doing it because I was too lazy to get a job and at the time didn't want to settle for the 9 to 5 thing. I wanted to start my own business and use the drug money as a startup. I had been using myself for years. Along with it I met lots of people into the dealing scene, and eventually started dealing myself. I had a lot of anxiety though, so I hated meeting up with people in parking lots and I definitely didn't want anyone to know where I lived. That's when I read about the Silk Road, and Ross Ulbricht being caught. Got obsessed with the idea of it. Got obsessed with learning OPSEC. All with the goal of eventually using my connections to start up my store. Well, after a couple of months I did. I started my store with three drugs, ketamine, meth, and some outdoor weed my buddy was getting for super cheap. All was going good for a few months. Had a couple thousand get stolen in an exit scam, but I had about $25,000 saved at that point so it didn't ruin my life like a few vendors I knew of. Eventually, I met a local connect that came into town only once a week, but had fucking anything I wanted. Mescaline, LSD, mushrooms, PCP, even, and fentanyl. At the time, people weren't really cutting heroin with fentanyl. I mean, I'm sure people did plenty, but it was not nearly as commonplace now. People just did fentanyl, and still do. I put all my addresses into an Excel spreadsheet along with their name, zip code, order, along with the amount. At the time, I was selling some super white powdered mescaline. The fentanyl was also a white powder, very similar consistency. Long story short, my Excel left up, or I left up, and about seven people's mescaline orders were filled in as fentanyl orders. They all went out. I didn't notice and kept doing my thing for a few days. After about 5 days, someone contacted me and told me their friend died from my mescaline. I immediately called bullshit, and went to check my order log and scale up how much I had of my mescaline left. Well, I had about 11 grams more than I should have. I still don't know how the f it could have happened. I wasn't a user, but I was definitely high off dabs. I went to check my order log on the market to see if anyone had finalized on their purchase, and a couple of them were, but none from a specific day including the person that messaged me. No one that had purchased mescaline that day had finalized their orders. The market I was on also had a feature to see the user's last activity, and none of them had logged in in at least three days, most two days. I immediately deactivated my vendor account. I didn't even need confirmation, I knew what happened. I knew I just killed several people. I sold the rest of my drugs, converted my Bitcoin to cash, 
and moved the F away. Didn't speak to anyone for weeks. Found a job in a restaurant. Living in a city I always wanted to. I haven't touched drugs since that day. I haven't had anything to do with that life since then. I still think about them. Every night, I saved their names and googled them a few days later. I was able to find info on four customers that definitely died. One customer shared it with a friend. They both died. I don't know why I'm even posting this, mainly because I have no one to tell, and even if I did, I don't think I could. I spend my days sober, clocking into work, clocking out of work, coming home, playing video games. I'm a complete recluse. People I used to know have distanced themselves immensely, and I know it's because I'm a shell of my former self. I can't help it, but I even tell a therapist about this. I don't feel like I deserve to be alive. Am I really living anyway? I don't even know anymore. Maybe this will help me feel better. Survivors of attempted murder. What's your story? When I was a newborn my biological father tried to kill me by choking me. It happened in my grandmother's kitchen and my mom bopped him over the head with a frying pan and stabbed him with one of those hot dog pokers you use on the grill. He's always been a real big piece of shit. I'm not sure if this counts exactly since the person wasn't trying to specifically kill me. But when I used to work at Starbucks, a guy was trying to kill his ex-girlfriend by causing a gas leak at our location with all of us still working there. Our shift supervisor smelled the gas and had us evacuate while calling the fire department. I remember thinking wow, I could have died over some stupid high school drama. Made me realize that every time something bad happens to me, I shouldn't overreact to the point where it inconveniences others like I'm the only person with problems to deal with. Don't want to be like that guy. I worked with this idiot that decided to show off his new pistol before work one morning. My co-worker and I were standing right beside him. I always thought he was kind of a moron so when I saw him messing with the slide of the pistol I decided to move back a little. And bang the gun went off. He barely missed me and ending up shooting himself. The police asked if I wanted to press charges. I declined because I didn't want to ruin the guy's life. What is the scariest thing you have witnessed with your own eyes? A job I used to work at, my boss had a heart attack in his office and died in the middle of the shift. The office lights were motion activated so we thought he left to go something as it was dark. I went into the office to get a new radio and there he was, leaned back in his chair with his eyes wide open. Scariest thing I've ever seen. Saw an old man slip and died at a bus stop in Portland early in the morning when I was a teenager. That was sad. But what really shook me was the way he was picked up by an ambulance. The sidewalk was washed off. And they left. Within 15 minutes people were occupying that space waiting for a bus. And it was like it had never happened. 15 years old. Driving home from work with my mom late at night. Saw emergency lights ahead and were eager to see what was going on. It ended up being three of my friends. Killed on impact in a single vehicle car accident. My mom had just went through the intersection 10 minutes earlier on her way to get me. We stayed there for several hours and watched their cell phones light up in the wreckage before they pulled the car apart to get the bodies out. Dead body whose skin was literally moving because of all the maggots under it. Freaky AF. Truck drivers. What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? parked off an exit ramp at about 3 a.m. for my 10 hour. The moon was full and high, and I spotted an unmistakably human figure in a nearby cut cornfield. A little spooky but I just wrote it off as an old timer putting up a scarecrow for the grandkids. Started watching a few YouTube videos before turning in and out the corner of my vision I thought I saw movement. I shut my lights off to get a good look, saw the figure but nothing else. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like maybe it was in a different spot, maybe a little closer even. I was definitely feeling a bit spooked. Highway was devoid of anyone besides a car passing every 10 minutes or so. I didn't want to, but I had to jump out to pee. I considered a bottle, but I told myself I was being childish. I took a look at the figure and it was right where I figured it should be. I hop out, walk between my truck and trailer and start leaking. Every fiber of my being wanted to look. I told myself again I was being foolish, but I couldn't help it. I looked out. The field was empty the figure wasn't there. My stomach dropped. I pinched off and jumped back in. I took off down the highway. Didn't give one shit about a violation. Stopped 40 minutes up the road at a well lit and very full loves. Haven't stopped on a ramp since. Ex-prisoners of Reddit. What are your horror stories things you wish you could unsee and how did you cope with it while locked up? The story my uncle told is he was in a cell with like 16 guys. Occasionally the guards would open the door spray a bunch of pepper spray, close the door, put on gas masks and then come in swinging batons. In some county jails they have 190 degrees water taps. They're there so inmates can make oatmeal, soup, or coffee without a microwave or any kitchen appliances. Well sometimes when there were fights, you would see an inmate fill a cup with 190 degrees water and a glob full of Vaseline. Then he would throw it on his opponent. Watching that will stick with me for a while. Mainly the terrible scream the man made as the Vaseline stuck to his face. He was taken to medical right after that. He had third degree burns all over his face and hands. The sound of a guy getting lock socked by several other inmates. What's the creepiest thing that's happened when you were camping or alone? Solo camping for the first time, intense struggling to sleep and all of a sudden hear what sounds like a demon screaming and beating its chest. Then another one, then another one. Turns out koalas make effing blood-curdlingly horrible noises at night. 
Wish I knew. I used to sleepwalk when I was younger but only really found out the first year I went away for summer camp. I would shower at night and go to bed clean, but wake up with mud completely caked up to my knees and no clue. Didn't happen to me, but not long ago, maybe three months ago, I was camping and awoke to a family near me whose child had been abducted in dead set middle of the night. Major search operation underwent, and after three weeks or so, I think the child was found alive and well. Needless to say, we'll never camp at that spot again. What is your scariest home alone story? The other night I'm asleep in my apartment, I hear my front door open but just figure it's my sister coming over to crash on my couch because she got in a fight with her boyfriend, happens sort of regularly, she's the only one with a key to my apartment, I heard her moving around and figured she was just getting settled and making something to eat, I go back to sleep and think nothing of it, wake up the next morning for work, and she's not there, weird since it was 5am, so I text and ask if she came over, she says no, I check my doors and the door to the outside I rarely use was left unlocked. TV picture froze, loud buzz, and a loud voice screamed I hate you, and then I'll kill you. It sounded like a woman whose local cords were tearing from how hard she was yelling it. Then the TV reset. Serious. Redditors who were almost murdered. What's your story? I was working at a gas station. It was at night and slow, so I was sitting in the office watching TV. All of a sudden, one guy comes in behind me. Another guy comes in in front of me. Guy in front says don't get up. I give him the wad of cash from my breast pocket, and then the money from my front pocket. They rush out back into the darkness. I stay put, just like the guy said. Then I call the owner. A car pulls up to get gas. I tell them they need to pay by credit card or exact change because I just got robbed. Then I reach up to touch my neck. It was bloody. The guy in back was holding a knife to my throat. A mentally ill kid in my school stalked me for a week and made plans to kill me. He said it was cause I made fun of him. Turns out he thought I was someone else. So there's that. The teacher said the video footage was creepy. I'd be walking down the halls and he was behind me, just staring. His plan was to put a shank in my neck. A teacher caught him before he stabbed me and I remember the kid left in police cuffs. Serious. Ex-prisoners of Reddit. Who was the most evil person there? And what did they do that was so bad? English guy here, I spent four and a half months in prison in 2018, there was a guy who was really nice, seemed like a genuine guy, that was until I found out her strangled his drunk wife to death and left her there whilst he went to work the next morning. My friend's dad was a volunteer chaplain, taking care of prisoners' religious needs, at the county jail. He came into our criminal justice class to talk about working at a jail. He told us that the most evil people at a jail are the ones that show no remorse for their actions. He saw the guy that killed the foreign exchange student that attended the University of Utah and he told us that the guy didn't seem to care at all. He was calm about everything heard a story that some inmates would put broken glass in their feces and throw it at CO's faces, so when they would wipe the stuff away from their eyes, the glass cuts them. One of the women on my wing cut up her lover and put his body parts in an empty TV box, then put the TV box on his mother's doorstep. 